This is Robert the Race and Teach, and today I got my second Velo Trek bike. Now, if you take a look at this box now, typical FedEx. This is the second box I've gotten from them that has uh, looked like it's been, you know, treated okay, but usually the bike is pretty well packed. I don't see any other damage. It's usually sliced for whatever reason. I'm not sure what it is. I'm not sure if that's Velotrex asks, you know, side or if that's uh, FedEx's thing. It is FedEx. I will say that this time, this bike got to me in less than three days. Uh, that is a record. I think actually two, to be honest with you. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm impressed with the shipping this time around. Uh, last time I was chasing it for weeks, so. So far, hopefully so good. Uh, next step, we'll be unboxing this thing. So here we are. Very important thing to do when opening this is make sure that the box says this, this side up. Uh, the first generation of boxes were actually designed to be cut from the bottom. And then you could actually just lift the box up. It was actually a better design because that way you didn't have to lift the heavy bike. You actually just lift the box off of it and then take the bike out of the carriage. Uh, I don't see staples, which is something that's, you know, that's why the straps were there. Um, the cardboard seems pretty sturdy though, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, take the tabs out. And mind you, I should set this on a tripod, but I'm like, what the heck? Let's see what happens here. There we go, one-handed. So let's see what she looks like inside. Two cover, standard. Oh, it's got the new tires. It's got the new black tires. So some of the tires were tan. I did like the first tan generation tires. It could be because of the color of the bike. I did go with the yellow mango bike this time. Padding's pretty nice. Looks like they've upgraded the padding here. Uh, solid block there, seats there. This padding, I don't recall in the last generation. Um, I am going to have to lift this bike out because I don't see the uh, I don't see the staples down on the bottom. So this is going to have to come out. And I'm definitely not doing that one-handed. But it does make it easier to remove the foam block that they have in there. And uh, just put that aside. Uh, everything looks really good. That's actually a really nice color there. A couple little things there. They got the upgraded fork. Uh, there's a the connection for the control module. Cover over the stem. That can go too. And take this piece out here. Another piece of foam to control, protect. I will say they do a very good job of packing. That block right there does a lot of protection for the derailleur. And this one has a standard little protector here. And these protectors are protecting the uh, fender. Everything looks really straight. So this is going to be a pretty... Uh, I could cut the box, I guess, if I wanted to. Uh, I'm going to attempt to do just a standard lift on this bike and this is a step over not a step through uh it looks like it's going to come out like a regular bike in the shop would the wheel and the handlebars are attached to the frame they're zip tied so everything i see right now shows me that so this is just going to be a big heavy lift if you have two people uh it's good if you're good at lifting weights this shouldn't be a problem like I said, the downside with this setup is that you've got to lift it out of the box. Uh, another option is to lay the box down on the ground and slide the bike out that way. Now that works too if you're just doing it one-handed, one person. Um, you could also slice the sides of the box and just pull it out the side, which that may actually be the way I go because I'm just not really in the mood to lift this bike out. But uh, next step here, I'll show you with the bike out and I'll show you what I decide to do with getting it out of the box. All right, so the box is a bike is out of the box, and basically, uh, it's a big box to lift it out of. So what I did is I tilted it sideways and slid it out. And because of the packing on the bottom, make sure what I did is I actually pulled the front up first. So I lifted the fork, pulled it out, 
and then it made some wiggle room it released the tension because the bike fits in the box exactly so when i lifted the front i was able to get some wiggle room and then i was able just to lift the back of the bike straight out i did do it sideways i did it at an angle so i kind of like had it tilted towards the floor and then pulled it out came straight out and as i said everything was attached so the wheels attached is zip tied to the frame the handlebars are right there zip tied to the frame so everything is in place the next thing you're going to see i'm going to pull everything off now cut all the zip ties for the tire and wheel separate that get all the foam off get the guards off please take this stuff off <laughs> it doesn't belong there uh, more than likely I'm very thorough when it comes to this stuff, so I'm going to be adjusting the brakes, adjusting the derailleur. I make it a standard operation for me, just because I have the tools and the knowledge. I will align the rear derailleur hanger to make sure it's straight. I'll check it. Uh, they usually aren't straight from the manufacturer, and it does really affect the shifting. Now, when you're dealing with an e-bike and there's power, you need that derailleur to be dead on. I know a lot of people don't do that extra step, but I do. Uh, it looks like all the spacers are there, stems in place. I like the QC stickers now. That means they're checking the stuff before it leaves. And this is new right here. That is the headlight mount. So they now took it from the fork to the stem. Okay, so I figured I was wondering what they were going to do about that. So there you go. That's the mount. Okay, so that's where the headlight will be mounted. So uh, I like what they did. I like the upgrades. The brake system uh, appears standard uh, flat mount with adapters. This is called an international standard adapter to flat mount brakes. So you can upgrade this to any brake system you want. Hydraulic hose. These are the hydraulic brakes. Looks like they're made by Tektro is my guess. They seem to be making a lot of... Uh, OEM brakes for people these days. The rotors, good size rotor, it looks like they're 180s. So that's gonna be some good slopping power. And that's it. Next thing you'll see, it's gonna see the true color of the yellow. I'm not sure about the black tires, but I think they'll go good with the yellow. I think they, they, they match better. And uh, we'll get the fender mounted. I can see the fender for the front tire right here. And uh, We'll see how the bike rides in a bit. Thanks a lot. Okay, so here we are. The bike is now out of the box. Every All the packing material is off. The only thing I didn't do is remove this piece yet. And I'm going to wait. Uh, I want to make sure that battery is going to fit in there. And I don't want it energized right now. So if you notice, the bike came with the handlebars taped kind of awkwardly on the side of the frame. I now have them hanging in the front and they're hanging upside down. Before you push that lever, mount it up into the stem correctly. I'm going to show you how we do that right now. And let it sit for a little bit before you push the lever, okay? Now, it's really cool. The front brake, I like that they put that in there. That's super important for hydraulic brakes. Don't lose that piece. That little red piece right there, it's a brake uh, pad uh, limiter. So if the lever was to be accidentally pushed, it doesn't allow the brake pads to go all the way out. And with hydraulic brakes, if they go all the way out, it's, it's a hassle. You can gingerly push them back in if you know what you're doing. Otherwise, it's a trip to the shop. So don't get all touchy-feely and start squeezing brake levers, especially upside down like that right now because air can be trapped in there. So what we want to do is when we mount the bars, we're actually going to let them set for a little bit, then all the air travel to the top so it doesn't get trapped in the system. Hydraulic brakes are great, but they also require a little bit of maintenance. So keep that in mind with the bike. So right now the bike comes like this. It was all wrapped up. I still have the guard in the back. That'll be gone in a few minutes. The stem is mounted backwards, facing the back of the bike. The fork, your red knob and this brace are going to be facing, this brace is going to be facing forward. The knob is going to be on your right as you're sitting on the bike, okay? Keep that in mind there. I, the, the, this stem here, is, to adjust this is really important. Some people overdo it, and it, it's just, you're going to ruin a lot of stuff if you do it. It's not going to ride right. 
the two bolts on the side, there's one on this side and one on the other side opposite of it. You loosen those. They're usually, they're, they're not super tight. Just loosen them enough. This bolt up here is called the preload bolt. And what this does is this squeezes the bearings from the bottom and the top. It squeezes out the system together and sets your preload so there's no slop in the steering. This is where the slop comes from. If you do not set this preload, you will have this moving back and forth, okay? So what I do is I take this and I'm gonna turn it. Hopefully I loosened it enough. And usually what I'll do is I'll get it over the bike. And I'm doing this on the ground. And the reason why I'm doing it on the ground is because most of you don't have a bike stand. I do have a bike stand. I could put it in the bike stand, but I'm just gonna do it on the ground the way everybody else would be doing it. Get it more or less centered to the front, okay? Just like so. And what I do is I stand back and look at the alignment of the fork. I'm close enough for right now, and I can adjust it later, so I'm not worried about it. And now, at this point, what I'm gonna do, let's see here, my Y wrench was in my pocket, now it's not. Go figure. Let me see what I did with it. <laughs> Go figure. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually put my Allen wrench key in this, and give it just a slight little, just a little bit of a snug turn. I don't want to crank it. I just want to see how loose it is. All right, so I have a handy Y wrench. Now there are tools in the kit, but I prefer to use mine. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna turn this and it's pretty much set. I might actually even, in my case, just cause I do this quite a bit, I'm gonna loosen it just a snippet. Now I'm gonna turn it, oops, that was out of frame there. Okay, so that is set. Once that preload is set, it should be like, it should be able to turn freely, but not have any play. Line this up as best you can for now without the wheel. And then I'm just gonna cinch it up. Once it gets, it gets to a point where it wants to stop, Go about an eighth of a turn after that. Now you're solid there, okay? So now to mount the handlebars, I'm gonna take my Allen wrench, I'm going here, and it's these four bolts. One, two, three, four. You remove these bolts, and then you'll mount your handlebar into the stem. So you'll take the bar from this down position, you're actually gonna rotate it, I see here. So right now it's crossed like that. You're actually gonna bring it up and it's going to go like this. And now the bike wants to fall, of course. This is why I like work stands. I'll probably put in the work stand a bit. So once these bars are going like this, you'll center that circle in the middle of the stem, just like that, okay? Anyways, next step you'll see, you'll see these mounted. Okay, so now what I did was I just got these bolts in place, hand, kind of hand started them. I haven't lined the bars up or anything. I just kind of threw them in the clamp. Now what I'm gonna do is take the bar and push it through there. What I want is I want this circle to kind of line up in there like that. But your personal preference, you can tilt this however you want, okay? So ideally you wanna get this lined up in there, okay? And once you get it where you want it, you just take your Allen key. And I switch from my Y wrench to this guy. I like this T-handle one better. And these are mine. These do not come with the Velotrick kit, but Velotrick does give you the Allen wrenches to put your bike together. So if you don't have the proper tools, they do give them to you, okay? So I'm just right now just going equally across all of them. I'm not making them super tight. I'm just putting equal pressure. Alternate, okay? Now, my final adjustment's not gonna occur until I get the wheel on. So right now, for this matter, I don't care that that's off. Ideally, they give you those lines to align for dead center, but I'm gonna actually adjust the bars to my own personal liking. And I will say that these bars are different than the ones that come with a step-through bike. They're slightly different. They're a little more flared out. They're not as far back. 
Uh, I'm not a fan of the pullback bar, but this one actually looks like it's going to be pretty comfy. So I'm going to give it a try before I switch them out. I also have another stem that I'm going to put on here. Uh, but we'll see how that goes as well. Um, anyways, now that this is up like this, remember I mentioned about the brakes. So these are hydraulic. This is the reservoir right here. It has all the fluid in it. Uh, the other thing I'm going to probably do, because I've heard of leakage with these, is that nut right there. See that where my finger's kind of pointing there? That's the banjo bolt for the brake system. I'm going to take, it's an 8 millimeter wrench. I'm actually going to take it. I'm going to make sure that that's cinched all the way in. Um, just to be safe, you never know. You know, it's, it's just a precautionary thing. Brakes are important, so you make sure they're cinched up right. If you're not feeling secure about it, you take it to a shop. Let them build the bike. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, they'll charge you, you know, depends on the bike, depends on what needs to be done. This is a pretty simple build, but remember that your life is in your own hands. If you do not put something in correctly, you can get hurt and you can die. So this is not a, it's not a toy. It's got a high speed vehicle that will hurt you. So you make sure you be prepared. I really wish though, and, and aside from that, this shifter, I wish they'd gotten rid of and put a real shifter on it. Uh, this is probably one of the, the hokiest, junkiest things you can get. But I have an alternative that is going to go on there eventually. So um, I like trigger shifters. I just don't like where that trigger shifter is. It just seems out of place being there. Um, the other thing I'm probably going to get rid of is this. And I'm not a fan of throttles, so that throttle is probably going to go. I like to pedal my bikes. All right. Anyways, bars are on. We will be next. But before I do that, I'm actually going to put the kickstand on. And the kickstand is actually going to bolt right back here in these two bolts. Now, the first generation bike I got, kickstand was already mounted. So this time it's not. So I'm going to have to mount that. The other thing too, cranks, they make it really simple. Left, right, match the pedal. Uh, I have special pedals that I'm going to be running. So... I'm not using the stock pedals. This seat is gone. It's comfy for most people. For me, being an active rider, this is the worst seat I've ever sat on. But that's me because saddles are personal. Uh, I will make the connections. Notice there's no control model module up here. And here's why. In the previous generations, the bikes were being delivered. The module was already connected. And they were finding them smashed. And... Because of the packing and the shipping and FedEx was kind of a little rough. Not the bash FedEx, but they're a little rough. Uh, they were breaking them. So now you're going to get a box. And here's the box. And in the box, you're going to have your kickstand, your pedals, your charger, some wiring cover. And I'll tell you what that's for. And This is your cover for the wire going into the back hub. This is your front quick release for your front wheel. Uh, the headlight is right there. Reflectors, if you're going to put them on, which I'm not because they just fall off. Bell, same thing if you're going to put it on. This hardware at the bottom of the bell is important. This is going to attach your headlight and your fenders. So don't lose that bag. And there is the module right here. So what they did now is they put it in the box so that it stays a little more protected and safe. It's right behind the charger. Now, keep that in mind now. These clamps, when you do open them up and put them on the bike, <laughs> be gentle. They do break. If you're in a frigid environment and it's kind of cold, I would actually warm the plastic up a little bit, like take it inside the house, put it near a heater. Don't put it on the heater, but I'm saying put it in a warm environment so the plastic can get to like room temperature and then put them on your bars, okay? Because this plastic is thin and it will snap if it's too cold. Uh, green, pretty simple. Green and blue are the two wires coming out of there. One's male, one's female. So when you come to the front of the bike, you'll notice green, blue. Pretty straightforward, right? It's gonna plug straight in, okay. Uh, and the headlight is red. And somewhere around here, there should be a red wire. There it is right there for your headlight. Okay. So next steps, everything else is pretty much bolt on and straightforward. 
So we'll go through a little bit of the alignment issues later. I'll show you how to adjust the brakes and uh, go from there on the next one. Okay, folks, let's talk fender. They had to redesign the fender mount to this new fork. Now, uh, I wanna warn you of something very carefully. You're gonna notice there's a point here where my finger's pointing. That's the top mount on the fender. And then these struts down here, they're actually gonna mount to these little tabs right down there. Now this tab is pretty solid. This bolt came out real super easy, just the way it's supposed to be. This bolt on this side, however, notice how it's kind of down a bit. <laughs> See that? It's phoning downwards. Once I get this fender mounted, I'm gonna have to adjust this. This thing was super tight. It's a super thin piece of aluminum here and it actually bent. So when I had to get that out, what I did is I held it with my hand down here, pushing up and then turning at the same time to try to keep that from bending anymore. Uh, I don't feel any cracks in the material, so I'm gonna tap this up with a mallet that I have to get it level. So right now, I left the top bolt here loose so I can move the fender around. And these guys right here will go in like so. And the hardware that they came with is this. I do not believe these are going to reach because if I look carefully right here, and put this through, I think it's got, uh, that might be enough for a fender. So I'm gonna give that a try. And let's see here, I'm gonna start it by hand. Always start these by hand. Don't use a wrench. Um, and you want it to start by hand because with a wrench you can put too much force and they'll actually strip the threads and then you're really in trouble. So there you go, that started nicely by hand. So that's in place there. So what I'm going to do now is do the other one, and now I'm going to line them up. I'm probably going to have to tap this up with a mallet to make sure the fender sits level. It's just for me. I'm very anal about things like that. I want this thing to be all perfectly aligned. So it's just the thing with me. So anyways, keep an eye on that when you're doing that. You notice now I have it up in the stand. I did take the battery out. That battery actually makes it so it's easier to handle. So I took the battery out, put it up in the stand, and now I can go through everything. Here's the cover. This is the cover that's already on the bike. It protects the wires here. Ignore the dogs in the background. I believe this cover here is going to go. I'm going to check to see if it's actually going to go right here. So they went, according to what Velotrek told me, they went to a different rear hub motor on this bike. And now this axle is really long. So I'm going to check that, and I believe that goes right, boom, like that. Protects the threads, keeps you from cutting yourself. So anyways, there we go. All right, so I'm going to continue on with the assembly and try to get this puppy lined up. It should be a couple more minutes, and we're good to go. All right, so there she is. Okay, we're now at the point where we're ready to get the front wheel on. So something to make... I'm not sure if too many people know really how to use a, a quick release properly, so I'm going to go ahead and run that through you real quick. So you'll notice that the levers on the disc brake uh, rotor side, the nut is on the other side. Now, a lot of people in the disc brake world will actually rotate these and flip them the other way so that you can close the lever without having to touch the rotor. That's how I usually run it, but for this, the sake of this video and the way most people will do it, this is the way they kind of want you to do it. And there's a lot of debate in the cycling industry about this. Okay, so uh, it makes sense the other way because I don't want to touch the rotor. I don't want to put my fingers on the rotor. I don't want my oils on the rotor. Otherwise, that's going to develop that nice brake squeal whenever you touch, uh, you activate the brakes and squeak. You'll hear just, Wee! they'll just howl forever. So ideally, you really don't want to touch that rotor at all with your fingers at all as well as the brakes. Now, if you notice here, that little brake uh, spacers in there, I'm now gonna pull that out. It's spring-loaded, and I mentioned in the thing, don't lose it. It's going back in the box there. Actually, it's gonna go back into my toolbox, because that's where I keep everything. There should be a gap right there where those brake pads are, and it should be wide enough for the rotor. So I'm gonna just slide this in here like so, and I'm gonna slide that into where the rotor pads are. Now, they are snug. And oops, I missed the hole, but it happened. So I'm going to go back again. 
It's kind of hard to, I'm doing a one-handed wheel install on a disc brake wheel. And what happens is it looks like I put the quick release in. Wait, I, what am I taping? I put the quick release in a little too much. See how it's caught right there? So what I'm gonna do is go underneath it. Now I do have it up in the stand, so I'm good. I'm gonna loosen the nut on this side just a bit. So now I should have enough play in there to slide this in right inside, just like that. Pull up on the bike. There we go. Now it sits in there nice and legal. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the nut just a little bit. I'm gonna turn it in until it makes contact with the, uh, I don't want all that play. See how much I can move that side to side? So what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna activate this. So that would be closed right there. So I want it to hit that because I want to tighten this up. So I'm gonna tighten it up by hand there. Now the forks have a safety built into them, that's the groove. Now right there, it's starting to get tight, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is now that I have no side to side play, I can let go of the wheels, I can go anywhere. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna open it. Okay, so now see I have play again. So now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take that play away. So pardon me while I, like I said, I'm trying to do this one-handed. I should set up a tripod, but it's easier this way. I'm just gonna hold that, give it a turn. And what I want is I want the quick release to get to about there when it gets really tight. Starts to get snug and hard to, hard to, to push, okay? Now in this case, it's super easy. All right, that's almost too easy though. I would actually go probably another eighth of a turn on the on the nut over here because I want a little more tension. I don't want this to come off. So let's try that one more time. I'm gonna back it down. And I'm gonna hold it. I'm gonna give it another turn. And now I get to about there and it's it's getting tight at that point of the cam. So now I have to. Now here's the problem. See how I want to put my hands here to grab and pull that in? And I want this up. I don't want it back because there's hardware here. So I'm gonna pull this up. So I'm grabbing from above the fork and I'm using my palm and I'm squeezing it in like that. And right there, that's it. So that's the quick release. Should we go down here that? Okay, so that is the brake rotors rubbing on the disc brake pads. And you can tell how it kind of rubs and doesn't rub. This rotor sadly is gonna to need to be trued. Now, a lot of people don't care about it, but I do. I have the tool to do it. And basically I have to come in here and find the spots where it rubs. Now, the other thing I can do too, to adjust it, because it might just need, might need to be centered. And actually when I put the wheel, the bike on the ground, I'll center the wheel and make sure it's pool. I'm not gonna adjust the brake yet. I'm gonna center the wheel, make sure it's centered in the fork and then check it again. If it's still rubbing, then what I'm gonna do is there's two bolts here on the mount of the caliper. These two bolts right here. I will actually loosen those, this one and this one at the bottom. I'll loosen those a little bit. I will squeeze the brake. It will center the caliper, and then I will tighten them up while I'm holding on to the brake, and that should make it equidistant and center itself on the rotor. Okay, so that's a cool little brake adjustment trick. And I'll do that with the back as well. Oh, and yes, the, the chain is ready to fall off. Be careful. See how it just did that? So you grab it from back here, push the derailleur right here, and put the chain back on the front chain ring. And usually I do that scoop it from the bottom, like so. And there you go. So I'm not sure if you saw that again. So I scoop it from the bottom and bring it back up. Okay, and now I will pedal it forward and make sure so see how it came off already again. So there's a there's a misalignment in this derailleur, so it's definitely gonna need some work. So my other one was not this bad. This one here, let's see if we're on now. So if you look at that front chain ring, there's a little wobble in it. Part of it is this guard here is also not doing much work, so I'm gonna realign this guard in a little more but it looks like it's close enough. So we will fine tune the adjustments later. All right, but there she is, starting to look like a bike, right? There we go. Sorry about the mess.
but I work a lot. I do a lot of work on bikes and a lot of work on everything. So here we go. So here we are with the finished product. This is what I call the Gen 2 Valotrek Discovery 1. Got just enough tire there, enough fork, enough light. Everything has been done. Now you're going to notice that there's a few changes I made to the bike already. One, I added the rear rack. I had it off my first generation bike. And my bag's already attached. And you guys are going to notice that seat post in the seat. And I know a lot of you are like, oh my gosh, that seat is so painful. It looks painful. Saddles are personal. And I'm a seasoned rider. So I ride other bikes. I have a whole collection of them. That seat is super comfortable for me. Uh, the shape and the padding don't look like it is, but trust me, it's very anatomically fitting and adjusted that ride. You can sit on that saddle all day. Like I said, not for everybody, so don't worry about that. But I do want to point out, I did add my Connect seat posts. This is a body isolation seat post, not necessarily suspension, but it is a form of absorbing road shock and energy, especially on a bike this heavy. It allows for an extra level of control. So I did add that in there. Added my comfy seat for me because my rides are going to be about 20 to 30 miles each way. Uh, my bags are attached on here. These are Ortlieb's waterproof classic bags. And let me tell you, they are durable, sturdy, and handle all the rough LA uh, roads out here. That's one reason why I got this bike with the tires that I have on it. I don't want the big fat bike tires i don't need them out here but i did need something with substantial rubber and this bike definitely had them so the bike is all done my pedals are also different i have a platform on one side i can just wear regular shoes and then i have clip-ins for my clip-in shoes which i do on longer rides so this bike is purpose-built designed to commute one of the things i added these grips here are made by esi they're silicone grips and they're ribbed they are some of the most comfortable grips I've ever used. I know they, the Bellatrix comes with that uh, one grip that supposedly has a, it's designed for comfort, but I have found that you actually apply too much pressure and the grip rubber is too hard and it just doesn't really do its job it's supposed to do. These guys will isol isolate body shock, uh, road shock, and they're just spongy and soft and grippy. The other thing you'll notice is I added a mirror this mirror is kind of cool because I can actually fold it up long ways so it can be skinny or it can be wide like this. So I'm going to try that. I haven't tried it yet. It's a new mirror for me. Got that on Amazon. You can look that up. And that's it. Everything's ready to go. I'll adjust the light as well once I get out into the dark. Set that up. Um, you'll notice that the throttle's disconnected. That's because I did do the conversion over to uh, class 3. I do have to maintain a 24 to 25 mile per hour average. So it's going to be close on this bike. Not sure if I'll be able to do it. Something that's really cool though, and like I said, the brakes now are set. They've been down, upside down for a while, or right side up, so they're actually good to go. Front brake was adjusted. Everything should be good. Do me a favor though, check over all your bolts that you're not using. For example, the rack bolts on this were loose when I got it, and the water bottle bolts are tight now. I have not put a cage on it yet. Um, wait, I have one laying around here. I'll probably throw one on. And there you go. That's the finished product. That's what she should look like. Minus the bags, of course, and the seat posts, and the seat, and the fancy grips. But if you do want these, get these at ESI. The Velo saddles, they actually make a whole line of different really cool saddles from the everyday comfort saddle to you name it. So, and the Connect Seat Post, it's definitely worth the investment. I think I, I've got one now on a lot of my bikes and I'm really impressed with the performance and the comfort I get. So there we go. I will say one thing, one little problem I had with the final assembly of the bike was the battery. Uh, just be careful when you guys get the battery, you'll notice in some of my previous videos, this was up and elevated off the frame. You have to pull the battery out and there's a black piece of foam inside. Pull the foam out, battery goes straight in. Okay. Other problem I had, the uh, lock. And we'll go over to that side right now. My lock didn't work. And I played with it for a while. I lubed it thinking maybe it was just frozen. 
turns out that I actually had to take the key, hit it, the key in real hard, and then it freed up and locked and loose and uh, and turned. So I called, I did contact Velotrek and I said, hey, this isn't right. Literally two days after contacted them, I have a new lock ready to go. I did get this one to function, but I am gonna replace it because I should not have to hit a key to get it to open. Other than that, ride impression. I'm sure this bike is gonna ride awesome. The first one rode awesome. This one's gonna work better. I have taken for a little test ride so far. I do like the 5 PAS. It does um, make a difference in the power output in the initial pedal stroke. More on that when I do my full review. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Hope this helps.